Hello friends, this is Durga again from my university, a one-stop shop to learn all the technologies. Um, at this time, we are talking about setting up uh, a Hadoop on uh, uh, AWS using CDH or Cloudera distribution. Uh, uh, especially, we are actually setting up MR1 or Classic on the 7 node cluster. Uh, and all the 7 nodes are provisioned from AWS. And as part of this video, we will continue talking about MapReduce V1. Uh, I will try to cover fault tolerance and speculative execution. So, for, uh, first let us understand what is fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means if there is issue, uh, especially hardware related issues, um, and if, if, uh, if one of the tasks, so when we actually submit the job, You can see that everything ran successfully without any issues. We can also validate that using uh, using job tracker UI. Okay, and this is the job tracker UI, and you can see that job is completed successfully. There are 40 maps, and uh, and everything is completed successfully. And you can see there is uh, something called killed here or failed or killed task attempts. So sometimes what will happen is even though your code is clean, uh, there could be any, uh, there could be some hardware issue or memory issue on the on a particular host, and which which might cause temporary uh, temporary issues for some of the tasks, and sometimes it could be permanent failure also. So, uh, for those kinds of issues, when you are actually trying to process enormous amount of data, uh, which can uh, range up to few tens of terabytes, um, let us say you are running a heavyweight job, which is running 3-4, uh, which, which will take 3-4 hours, and if uh, some, uh, some issue happens, or the memory crashed, or some other issue happens, so which is quite common when you are dealing with hardware, and uh, and the job will uh, end if you if the if the technology you are using does not have a proper fault tolerance mm -hmm. so fault tolerance is nothing but uh, in case of any unexpected failures which can be recovered easily uh, should be recovered uh, without uh, uh, without huge impact on the application so uh, first we need to understand what kind of failures that can happen and how uh, MapReduce 1 or Classic uh, overcome uh, 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 these values uh, because MR1 is a fault tolerant. So, we need to understand how it actually overcomes those values. So, there can be uh, uh, failures at task level. So, when we say task, when we actually submit a job, the job will be executed in the form of map tasks and reduce tasks. So, there can be failures at these map tasks and reduce tasks. Also, there can be failures at the task tracker. So, task tracker is nothing but daemon process, which is running on each of the slave nodes in the cluster. So, if you go to Cloudera Manager and go to MapReduce Service and MapReduce Service, uh, go to Instances, you can see these task trackers in green and these task trackers uh, will be running all the time on all these uh, four hosts. So, these are the ones which will actually keep track of the resource utilization. They will talk to the job tracker and also they will actually invoke the map tasks and reduce tasks. Okay. So, uh, even these can fa fail uh, because uh, 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 memory over allocation or any hardware failure, these also can fail. And third type of failure is job tracker failure itself. So, job tracker is only one process um, in, uh, 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 in one of the nodes in the cluster and it can also fail. So, the failure can happen at task or task tracker or job tracker. So, um, uh, we will understand how uh, um, MR1 or classic is fault tolerance for most of these issues. So, task failure even though um, it is more common, the probability of task failures are high, uh, uh, there will be very less uh, damage uh, because of the task failures especially with respect to um, uh, with, re with respect to unexpected events 
uh, so task failures can happen uh, due to bug in map or reducer code in that case there is no other option than fixing the bug but there can be other issues also like bugs in jvm can cause task failures which might not be uh, 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 which might be fixed or which might be uh, which might not repeat uh, every time sometimes task might hang sometimes there could be hardware failures also on one of the host if if the motherboard crashes all the task trackers that are running on that will actually fail and they they have to be failed over to other nodes so all these are designated as the task failures if if uh, if a task fails uh, and it can fail due to bug in the mapper or reducer code bug in jvm it could hang or it could be hardware failures also so irrespective of whatever is the reason because the map reduce framework does not know why a particular task is failing okay so irrespective of the reason what it will do is it will try to restart the same task four times so first time it will try to restart if it fails again it will restart again uh, if it fails again it will restart again if it fails again it will restart again but all the four attempts will be done on four different nodes it will not try to restart on uh, uh, one node always so the reason why it tries to restart on four different nodes is to ensure that there are no hardware failures so for, uh, hardware failures on four different nodes at the same time is highly unlikely so it will just restart four times on four different nodes um, to make sure that hardware failures are not the cause uh, for you, for the task failures if after fourth time also if it is failing then it will uh, fail the entire job you cannot uh, uh, um, and it will uh, abruptly stop the job and if you want to increase the number of attempts or decrease the number of attempts you can uh, set these parameters called uh, map dot max dot attempts so these parameters i i have in my presentation are from the older versions so we can actually go and search here uh, about the actual parameter max dot attempts so map red client failover max attempts i think this is different uh, yeah this is the one i guess let me see i don't think that is the one map dot max dot probably it might be using the default values some sometimes you will not see those uh, uh, defaults here okay so these are the parameters which you, you can override uh, to actually reset to different uh, value and if the failures of a job can be ignored sometimes even if some of the tasks are failed you might be able to ignore those jobs uh, typically it is not the case but if you want to enforce that you can actually uh, set at the percentage so if if a job is running with 100 uh, tasks and even if two tasks are failed if you don't worry about it then you can set it to 2% so only if more than two tasks are failed then the job will be failed otherwise it will not fail the job and also there is something called speculative execution which which i will talk later so this is how task task failure comes uh, can can happen uh, either due to bug in the code or bug in jvm or hanging or some hardware failures and uh, it will be uh, uh, it will try to address it by restarting that uh, uh, task uh, four times by default on different nodes to write off uh, uh, any non code related issues uh, so that's how the tasks are fault tolerant in uh, map reduce now the second one is task tracker failure if there are no hard bits from task tracker to job tracker for 10 minutes by default then the task tracker will be removed from the pool and no tasks will be submitted on that uh, node where the task tracker is not sending the hard bit and also if the task tracker is actually handling map tasks and reduce tasks and if there are too many failures then the task tracker will be blacklisted uh, so if if the task tracker is blacklisted again there won't be any map tasks or reduce tasks uh, that will be running on that until um, the task tracker is whitelisted again and then if there are too uh, too many failures for a task tracker per job 
so the previous one is for any job uh, for all the jobs if, if there are too many failures uh, on a given task tracker then it will be blacklisted this one is if a task tracker is failing for some reason for a given job even then the task tracker will be blacklisted and no other jobs no other tasks related to other jobs will be submitted in both the cases until the task tracker is whitelisted okay but uh, even if the if one of the ta uh, even if one or few of the task trackers are down as there will be an uh, other uh, set of task trackers which are trying to uh, help you submitting map tasks and reduce tasks on uh, it is not a critical failure even though you need to uh, worry about it and you have to fix it but it is not a critical failure and uh, again fault tolerance is uh, implemented for task trackers also only thing is uh, the task tracker will not be restarted somewhere else but all the tasks that are supposed to be executed by a given task tracker will be submitted to other task tracker and the, the most significant failure is job tracker failure it happens rarely but it can happen but when it happens it is the single point of failure because it actually must of scheduling all the jobs it is the one which will, which will actually submit the job and also it will uh, talk to the task trackers and um, make sure the job is running uh, successfully if it is failed you cannot run the jobs until job tracker is up and running okay this slide is very important and you have to understand how the uh, 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 task uh, failures uh, are addressed in mr1 how task tracker failures are addressed in mr1 and with respect to job tracker failure make sure you understand that if job tracker goes down you cannot run any jobs because it's a single point of failure now we will talk about speculative execution so what happens is sometimes when you submit a large job let's say there is a job which will actually use 10 uh, 100 map tasks on a 10 node cluster uh, let's say all the tasks are running very fast every other task is running uh, within 30 seconds but one of the task is uh, running very slow there is no progress at all so in that case what uh, uh, the, again the issue could be there uh, there could be a bug in code there could be uh, bug in jvm there could be some hardware issue on that particular node uh, so even that can actually make a given task uh, very slow so in that case uh, what it will do is uh, if speculative execution is enabled by default it is true it will create a duplicate task for that uh, slow task so uh, same set of data will uh, it will try to process on multiple nodes and uh, multiple nodes uh, using multiple tasks okay and if uh, so uh, uh, by default it is enabled and uh, uh, these are the parameters which will actually control uh, uh, the speculative execution uh, how it works speculative task to process the same set of data a uh, same set of uh, block uh, same block will be created if a mapper or reducer is taking longer without much progress if original task finishes uh, first then speculative task will be killed or if speculative task uh, finishes first then the original task will be killed so only one task uh, output will be preserved and the other task will be killed whichever uh, uh, finishes first that task uh, output will be preserved and the other task will be killed what is the criteria by default it is enabled and it is betterment for a particular job as there will be multiple processes for the same task resource usage resource usage can be high for example if you are running a 1000 uh, task job and if there are too many tasks running very slow and uh, if it creates speculative tasks for uh, those many tasks then the capacity for other jobs might go down so uh, uh, you have to keep in mind about the impact of the speculative execution and uh, if it is happening uh, very frequently then it could be an issue with the hardware or with your code so you have to fix the hardware or the code and if your cluster capacity is under configured then it is better to disable speculative execution what is it what it what is it for it is mainly for infrastructure or hardware issues which might be making uh, uh, some of the tasks slow and if the if there is a bug in code you have to fix that 
bug in the code you, uh, and speculative execution uh, uh, if if it if it is causing speculative execution due to the bugs then uh, uh, your cluster capacity will go down significantly okay so this these are the uh, important things which you need to keep in mind with respect to uh, map reduce one or classic uh, that being said, as part of the next video, we will try to understand the disadvantages of the MRU1 and why we require another framework um, uh, which is uh, um, uh, better than this one and how uh, the other framework which is YAN plus MRV2 try to address these issues uh, uh, that are prevalent in MR one or Classic. That being said, it is very important to understand uh, those important parameters the architecture, uh, the job life cycle and also the fault tolerance of the MRE1. There can be some questions in the certification if you are planning to give the certification. If you like the video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. If you want to discuss further about big data certifications, please join my LinkedIn groups called ITVersity hyphen big data or ITVersity hyphen certifications. And if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And also, if you want to uh, fund me, uh, you can uh, use this section, support this channel and click on support button and uh, uh, support with whatever amount uh, uh, you want, any, any, anything between $1 to $500. And uh, I will try to come up with more and more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.